What if the armies of the Lord picked up and dusted all Hey guys, uh, Jason here. I'm one of the pastors at North Park Church here in Columbus, Nebraska. And I am very pleased to be bringing you your life group message yet again this week. And we're still in our, our War Room series. Um, Jesus' instruction on a, a prayer, ways to pray, directions to pray in. And this is a 22nd week of that this week. So really, really digging into this. And um, this week we're, we're talking uh, again about forgiveness, you know, and as Pastor Lynn says often in his messages, forgiven people forgive people, which is true. If, if you're forgiven by Christ and you know it, he's in your heart, you are absolutely going to forgive people around you. Um, what we're talking about today specifically is uh, forgiving people that that are difficult to forgive. People that, that, um, that it would be easy to say don't deserve it, right? Uh, you know, one of the things that I've learned after following Christ for a few years is that uh, one of the best ways to really, really get close to Him is to be willing, be prayerful about how to endure the injustice um, that is heaped upon you by the world and by everybody around you. Be willing to um, accept being treated unfairly, being mocked, being persecuted, and not only, not only accept it, but actually forgive the people that, uh, that bring this sort of stuff about. And not because they deserve it, not because you're going to be repaid anyway, but simply because Christ commands you to do it, he did it for you, and it's just a, a great way to get close to him. So the verses that we're using this week are from Luke 6, verses 32 through 36. I'm going to go ahead and read those verses right now. And you guys in your group, just follow along in your Bibles, uh, on your outline. And when we're done, we'll get into some discussion questions. Okay, so Luke 6, verses 32 through 36. Here we go. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. Some great verses there about uh, not running around feeling as though everybody deserves to, to get what they've earned. Because honestly, if we ran around just getting what we had earned or what we deserved, we'd all be in serious trouble, right? So on to our discussion questions. Question one from these verses uh, from Luke 6, what stands out to you the most? What about these verses stands out to you the most? Pray about that, talk about it, and we'll get back for question two. Okay, and we're back. You know, um, as usual, a lot of directions you could go in with that. Um, Holy Spirit could, could be speaking to you on a number of things. You know, of course, what pops out to me right off the bat is a forgiving people and expecting uh, nothing in return. Not, not expecting them to be grateful, not expecting them to change their ways, not expecting them to all of a sudden understand my point, lending to people and expecting nothing in return. I mean, this is, this is a difficult thing to do. We read it all the time in the Bible, right? Turn the other cheek. We know that Jesus tells us to forgive, to lend, to take care of people who not only can't repay you, but usually have no desire to do so. But it's a difficult thing to apply. So that jumps right out at me. But to get to question two, what I really notice are these words, benefit, credit, and reward. There's a lot, a lot of focus on this, like, like the reward of adhering to what Christ is telling us. So for question two, why the focus on that? You know, as, it, as we read through these verses, we've got... Uh, what benefit is that to you? Um, what credit is that to you? Expect nothing in return. Your reward will be great. 
So why the focus on rewards? Pray about that and talk about it. Okay, hopefully that generates some good discussion there. Um, I, you know, obviously, the eternal reward is great, and that is something that we always want to keep in our hearts. Thinking eternally can be difficult, but it's, uh, it, it's a great way to grow to try to keep a top-of-the-mind awareness of that. But another thing that I'd like to point out here is that um, you can really tell how uh, passionately you are seeking Christ by the way that you are seeking your rewards. And what I mean by that is the person who is really desiring to pursue holiness, desiring to follow in Christ's footsteps, uh, is going to be focused on godly rewards, eternal rewards. The, the reward for enduring the injustice of people is that Christ commands you to and it glorifies him. And for the godly person, that's the credit, that's the reward, that's the benefit. But for the person that just cannot get over the injustice of it all, has an impossible time uh, restraining themselves when it comes to making sure that everybody gets what they deserve, that person really needs to, to do some serious praying and, uh, and, and ask themselves how, how much they truly desire to follow in Christ's footsteps. Because if those are the rewards that, that, that a person is seeking, these worldly rewards, to be treated fairly, to make sure that everything is repaid fa fairly, to make sure they're understood, to make sure that they don't get treated in, with, with injustice, a person seeking the wrong rewards, and there's some prayer that needs to go into that. So we're going to move on to question three now. Um, somebody in your group, read Luke chapter 14, verses 12 through 14 aloud. That's Luke 14, 12 through 14. And then we will get back for a couple more questions. Do that now. Okay, so for question three, what is God's instruction to us in these verses? What's he, what, what point is he trying to make? What's he telling us to do? How's he telling us to act? Pray about that, talk about that. Okay, so this banquet is a great uh, picture of sacrificial love and sacrificial forgiveness. You know, it's, uh, it's easy to pat ourselves on the back because we do good or we sacrifice our time or we sacrifice our money, we sacrifice our effort for people that we love, for people that we care about, for people that in the back of our minds we know are going to do their part as well. But what Jesus is telling us is that uh, you know, anybody will do that. Worldly people do that. Sinners do that. And they, they do that for the reward of it being repaid. They know that that will happen. But what Christ is telling us in these verses is, no, really, you're blessed when you sacrifice your time, your money, your effort, your love, your prayer for people that, um, again, not only cannot repay you, but typically don't know how and have no desire to do so. And that's, that's a tough thing to apply. So moving right into question four, is that difficult for you? How is that difficult for you? Pray about that, talk about that now. Okay, so for our last question, how can your life group help you to apply what Jesus is telling us about forgiveness. And let, let's talk about this for just a second because we, we kind of, we see both sides of the coin here. You've got um, the individual who is struggling with sacrificing love or forgiveness unless it's to somebody that they feel deserves it. That's difficult. So maybe you struggle with that, pray about that. How can your life group specifically help you? But on the other side of that, um, one thing that I see a lot is the individual that will not accept forgiveness or sacrifice or a seat at the table from somebody unless they feel that that person has a right to be serving them. And, and uh, just as an example, what I mean by that is uh, being a pastor, 
one of the things that I run into a lot is uh, trying to desperately help somebody that needs help, that has asked for help. And this individual, these individuals, it's a common heart issue, are more than willing to accept help or sacrifice or counsel from me or another pastor, but not from just your, a, a, a member of the church. Because I, I believe in their mind, they feel that certain people have earned the right to speak into their life, while other people have not. So maybe you find yourself on that side of forgiveness or sacrifice of your own will. Either way, wherever you find yourself, I want you to prayerfully ask God how specifically your group can help you to apply what Jesus is telling us about forgiveness in these verses. Do you need help applying forgiveness to other people? Do you need help receiving forgiveness from other people? Do you need help with both? Pray about that. Talk about that. Be willing to apply that in your lives. Be willing to be accountable to the people that God has put in front of you, not just the people that you think have earned the right to speak into your life, but be willing to be accountable to the people that, that you, you don't think have earned the right because that's part of it too. And, uh, and it's been a pleasure for me to be here once again. I hope you guys have a great week. Be praying for each other. Uh, be holding each other accountable. Be on the phone with each other. Be loving each other. And I'll be back with you next week.